welcome to Therapist Spotlight. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Therapist Spotlight. With you today is your host, Joshua Brooks, and we're here with Daphne Fung. How are you, Daphne? Good. Thank you, Josh. How are you? I'm not too bad. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about Daphne's healing journey, what her modality is, how she came to the modality, how she sort of has tweaked it to her own unique blend, and we'll go from there and see where she's at. So Daphne, how did you originally become interested in natural medicine? How do I get interested? Well, when you've got to think back, wow, that's a lot of years, 20 years. <laughs> off. <laughs> you've got to think. Um, I think I've always been interested in natural healing anyway. And as you know, you know, from Asian background and Chinese born in Hong Kong, yep. I was brought up with all that stuff, you know, Chinese medicine and dad especially was influenced me a lot, you know, living with the environment, with the seasons, the cooking, the medicines, if you're unwell, you, you do this first before that. And, and as you're growing up, you sort of disregard all that because you're young and silly. Yep. But then, you know, as I got a bit older, I sort of thought, oh, you know, it's maybe there's something to what dad, mum and dad are saying and keep pushing all these herbs into me. And, <laughs> and, uh, and I thought, well, you know, I spent 10 years doing beauty therapy work. Yep. Just, just making everybody look good. And then turn 2000, I thought, oh, God, change to millennium. Let's have a look and see what's happening here. And I decided, no, nah, I'm sick and tired of trying to make people look good. And I'm hearing stories about how people don't feel good anymore. They just don't feel well. So it prompted me to think, oh, well, maybe there's something in it with mum and dad saying about Chinese medicine. So I studied Chinese, traditional Chinese medicine, TCM, and specialised yeah, right. in acupuncture in the year 2000. And which oh, college did you study at? Um, in Brisbane, a private college. And yeah. I thought, well, why not? Change millennium, change career. So I did. And I haven't looked back. And it was 2000. So that's how it really influenced me there because I thought, now I want to make people feel good, not necessarily mm -hmm. only just look good. Yeah, wonderful. And that's where, yeah, that's where it all came from, from because I brought up with all this culture. So were and, your parents actually like registered acupuncturists or anything or is it just yeah. it just in the culture, just embedded within the culture? Yeah, the it's just in the culture. To me, I thought everybody did that. If the season is too dry, you make this herb to drink. If it's too wet, you'd make that herb to drink. I thought everybody did that. And then when I left home, I was talking about, oh, yeah, the season's really cold and dry and we've got to do this. So I thought I was crazy. <laughs> I just didn't think that nobody else did that. And then I realised it's just part of growing up with Asian background and mm. it's always about cooking and herbs. Yeah, it's, it's just a natural way of life, living within your environment. Yeah, um, I know a lot of um, going to school with a few of my Asian mates, they would always do gua sha. Yeah. Because, you know, like that's what their grandmothers would do. So they'd come to come to school with all of these like marks and you're like, what's that? And they're like, oh, it's my grandmother. She scraped me because I had a cold <laughs> or something. And you're like, oh, wow. <laughs> so your grandmother didn't whack you. She just scraped you. <laughs> yeah. <that's right. laughs> yeah so, um, so growing up with that as part of your culture and then moving from the beauty industry, how has that influenced your practice now in terms of what, what you do? Yeah, when I started acupuncture, I was really sort of blown away. You know, it was really hard concept to grasp the yin and yang and all this five element stuff. It's way over my head. And I really tried hard to try and get it and understand mm. it. I would say it would have taken me a fair few years to really get that. But, you know, the reward is there because you're, you're, you, if you try too hard, you don't get it. Mm. It's not something that is logic. It's beyond logic. That's where pe people sort of struggle with that. It, it's not logical. So when I discovered, just let it go and let it flow, it just works out really well. You can get to so many different things with Chinese medicine. Mm. Um, it's just like two, 3,000 years old. So they've done something right with it. Yeah. You know, so you've got to really embrace it and, and trust in it. That's the biggest thing is to be able to, to trust that. And when I gave up beauty therapy and, and went into this, it was so rewarding because I could see results. People were feeling better. Mm. And um, and I changed in 2000 practice. I, you know, established my clinic in beauty therapy was finished. I now specialize in acupuncture, Chinese medicine for about a good 10 years. Then the 
tables turned again for me in 2010. I thought, oh, gee, you know, I'm just treating people's signs and symptoms is now becoming boring. Mm. So I was introduced to what we call the next phase with esoteric acupuncture. And so is that what the um, poster is in the back there with the um Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's what esoteric acupuncture is stimulates. It's just another, you know, changing direction for me because of traditional stuff is now just out the window for me. Mm. And I work very much with esoteric acupuncture. I get results a lot faster. Um, I don't get anybody complaining about it. They just they just get addicted to the treatment because the result is so fast and they just feel so good. Um, so I'm totally blown away and I really submerge myself deeper into that mm. and realize this is the way to go. It's, I call it the 21st century Chinese medicine. Yeah. Now the old ways are absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's perfect. But I think with the modern age and times and what we've got with technologies, we have to move ahead with that as well. Something's mm. got to change. You know, humanity globally's awareness and consciousness has changed. So yeah. therefore your work in natural therapy also has to change. Mm. And that's why esoteric acupuncture is so effective because it's moving with the times and people are understanding it and getting it. So, so how does it differ? So how does esoteric acupuncture differ from sort of TCM? Okay, first of all, we use needles. Yep. Exactly the same. You're puncturing mm -hmm. the skin and you're making that. The biggest difference is with esoteric acupuncture, we don't address signs and symptoms as such. I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. If you're coming into me for just normal acupuncture, you would have a specific complaint. And I would look at your complaint and treat you for the complaint and address that. Mm -hmm. But with esoteric acupuncture, it's not so much you can tell me your complaint. And I'm going to look at you as a whole picture. You heard of the saying, um, you treat the root cause of something. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, yeah. pretty pretty basic stuff. We can apply that if you're traditional acupuncture, treat the root cause. For example, you come in, you've got you know gut issues. Oh, I've got reflux, I've got bloating, blah, blah, blah. So you look at the, the, the background behind that. What's the root cause of that? Mm -hmm. Could it be just bad food eating, too much alcohol smoking? Yeah, 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 it can be all that too. But you usually find an underlying reason could be due to stress. When you're under a lot of stress, you can't digest food and digest your emotions of stress at the same time. Mm. One's got to give in. And usually yeah. it's your food compromised. So you get bloating, reflux, it's not digesting, fermenting, sitting there, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So we kind of get the idea that treating the root cause of a physical symptom is how we look at that. So mm. you address the stress, then you address the ability to digest the food. Yeah, well. Wow. Now mm. you expand that concept of looking at the root cause of problems. We're gonna expand that now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In esoteric acupuncture, we look at the same symptom. Your complaint is bloating and reflux. We know it's around the gut area, but now we're gonna say, the root cause of that is your energetic level. It always is. Everything that you have a physical complaint from your physical body, disease, aches, pain, whatever you want to call it, comes from not just your physical body. Mm. We're going to go out and think about it from a bigger perspective. It comes from an energetic level, which is your energy centers or commonly called your chakras. So when does this able, tie into five element at all? Or is that sort of it, a little bit um, different? Or? We don't necessarily need to. We can mm -hmm, incorporate mm -hmm. that. When yep. you're looking at energy systems, yep. for example, you have seven major ones in, in the body. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at gut issues again, you're looking at the solar plexus. Okay. Yeah, the solar okay. plexus chakra may not be working for you um, completely. So therefore, that affects your physical area, which is your gut and digestion mm. you see so yep. your root source now becomes not so much your stress well that could be involved too but now it's we take it further and say okay the solar plex isn't working as well as it should be so therefore your gut problems are happening and that could also be made worse with your stress and your lifestyle mm. see, so you're taking it further mm. 
So esoteric yeah. acupuncture immediately centers, realigns, and reset and rebalance all your seven major energy centers. That in turn then will feed and tell all your glands to function, hey, work properly here. Mm -hmm. Your gland secretes hormones. Then your hormones secreting proper amount of hormones mm -hmm. to those organs in relationship to them are going to work better. Yeah. And so when, once that's working better, your whole body's working a lot better. So if someone came in with that digestive problem, would you then choose acupuncture points to treat them? Or like, how does it differ with that kind of thing? How do you open up the chakra? How do you actually, what's the treatment okay. look like? Yeah. yeah. The other secret part to esoteric acupuncture are selected patterns. Ah, we, okay, yep. we create patterns on the body that will affect all seven. We mm -hmm. don't just try to balance one because it's like a five element effect. You affect one element, the other four is going to be affected. Yeah. You cannot just disassociate. We yep. align all seven, the front, the back. So therefore every gland is going to be realigned and functioning and mm -hmm. every organ is going to be stimulated and rebooted. Yeah. No, wonderful. So you, you really have no choice. Because yeah. once it's like, it's like described like a Rubik's cube, you know, when you yep. walk in, your colors are all over the place, randomly, all over the place. When you walk out, the Rubik cube is all the size of in the same color as it should be. Yeah, that's, wow. That's what we call realignment. When mm -hmm. you realign your entire physical body from every single cell to every gland and organ is working and functioning better. And that's why you feel so good. You have no choice but feel good. <laughs> <laughs> so what made you decide to go esoteric acupuncture? Like, how did you find it? Where, well, it was in, yeah, I know it's strange, isn't it? Sometimes, as I said, when, when you're ready to learn something and you keep asking yourself, got to be a bit more, got to be a bit more, and something opens in front of you and you, you step through that door and you embrace it. Esoteric yep. acupuncture is only very a small number of people in Australia practicing it. Mm -hmm. It's developed by Dr. Mickey Osanke in the US, in LA. Yep. Um, and he introduced it in back in 2010, I think it was. And uh, and I was one of the, the first ones to embrace that. And I just took it like, wow, that's just stimulating every sense of my organ. Because it's, um, ba it's based on esoteric teaching. It's based on the ancient wisdom or yep. ancient knowledge. It's based on Kabbalah tree of life. It's mm -hmm. based on also traditional Chinese medicine, five elements, yin and yang. It's all that encompassing as well. Does it have and an I Ching component to it at all? Or um, I Ching? Yeah. yeah. Uh, not so much as as such, but it's yeah. involving numbers. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So it's a sequencing of pattern. A pattern can have 12 needles or a pattern can have 21 needles. And each pattern has to be put in in a special way in a sequence, mm. you know, from one to 21 and to remove it, it's got to go from 21 to one. It's like a person trying to open a safe. If you have a safe, you've got a combination and you yep. must unlock that in a certain way. Otherwise it's not going to open. So the pattern, each pattern has to be put in a certain way to unlock that vault. Mm. And so what, can people expect from a treatment from that, that sort of stuff? Is there any sort of side effects or what, what sort of happens post-treatment? How many treatments do you need? Do you find? Um, okay, the, the, the biggest difference is usually everybody feels totally relaxed. They come down at least a few notches. You know, yep. they're, they're just coming down from the adrenal pump mm. and they just feel good. It may take uh, a few hours or instantly or might be overnight. But generally people for the first treatment sleep really, really well because it's such a manipulation of your body. Mm. So your body tends to shut down and relax because you're not used to that. And you yeah. have really deep baby sleep, I call it, baby sleep that night. And the next day everything clicks in and you just feel good. And yeah. good describing good, everybody's just so different. Yeah. And, you know, because it, the beauty of it can be combined with traditional stuff too. Like, mm -hmm. for example, if you came in again with gut problems mm -hmm. and I know that the solar plexus is not working as well for you, so I'm just going to concentrate and get the solar plexus working better. 
And I'm going to put some traditional points in there to stimulate your stomach yeah, and your yeah. brain or, or intestine to work better as well. So yeah. you can combine it yeah, and well. to, get, to get that effect, a better effect. The whole thing is about a synergy, synergy effect from the practitioner, that's me, mm -hmm. holding with my hand a needle, mm -hmm. manipulating the chi with that needle into your body and my intention for this person or for you would be to try and manipulate energy flow into the gut, the solar yeah. plexus. So it's the three things happening, the practitioner, the chi and your intention. Mm -hmm. To create so do you do so do you do any like meditation practices yourself to get yourself in tune with it um because of that intentional aspect uh do you do qigong like yeah i do a lot of meditation and yep. that's, that practice sort of helps you to stay in tune mm -hmm. with that as you know with chinese medicine a lot of it is intuitive anyway mm -hmm. but with esoteric acupuncture it's more than a lot yeah, of intuition. Okay. So you, you need to really have a good frame of mind. You cannot really, well, I don't, I like to walk the walk and talk the talk. Mm -hmm. I don't go out party drinking, smoking, whatever it is the night before I have to see people or clinic yep. um, because I think it affects your, I do believe it does affect your treatment. Yeah, it just yeah. knocks you out of that sort of headspace. You're not so tuned in. Yeah, but, you're not yeah. so focused, and you know if, if you're all if you can't even see straight, how are you going to be able to manipulate your chi? You know, this poor person lying in the bed. You know, like if, you, if for uh, I'm just, just pulling out a scenario now. What, what if this person um, is uh, alcoholic, goes to AA, right? Mm. So I go out and I party and I drink and all this alcohol and stuff, and that would be in my energy field. Yeah, am I doing a, a disservice or not? to this person lying there yeah for okay sure. so then, you've got to think broadly in that yep. term yeah yeah 100 percent. yeah well this has been wonderful daphne thank you so much for coming on where can we find mm. you in terms of your clinic address and where is the best place for people to connect with you and where, where can they look you up okay i think probably the best way now everyone is technical so go to the website daphne yep. fung's healing center.com Yep. And you'll find all the, the services and, and things available there, contact number, email. Yep. Um, a lot of my workshops and classes are done now via electronic and Skype. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you're in Toowoomba in Queensland, you can always come and visit me to have treat, uh, treatments. Um, the only thing we can't do via Skype is treatments. You know, I've got to really touch the body to get the needles in there. But yeah. otherwise, consults and anything else mm. or via electronics and skype now and so just quickly what other workshops can they look forward to besides the esoteric acupuncture what yeah okay so yeah acupuncture is my main thing i do mm -hmm. teach esoteric workshops yep. like for example um i do akashic record reading as well mm -hmm. that tells you about your past lives and what you have um done in the past that may help you in this lifetime that also can be done through skype only last weekend i did a workshop for advanced class meditations. And yep. before that, I did a, a workshop to teach people how to get access to your own Akashic record and do it yourself. Yeah, so, awesome. and do, Feng Shui is another big one. It's very common. I do that twice a year, teaching people how to align their environment, their living space, yep. and cooking as well. You know, it's all about your body, mind, and spirit. Yeah. So you've got to think, you know, the lower part of you, you've got to have the body, nourishing mm -hmm. the body. The mind meditation classes, spirit, like in teaching you esoteric studies. Yeah. Yeah, wonderful. So it's, it's a real package, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. You just can't treat one without the other, can you? It just leaves mm -hmm. you that unwhole, doesn't it? Like it has to be that whole holistic, more approach. Yeah, that's what true holistic is, is all about, is treating all three levels of that and giving people the, the choice and the option. And this is the time now. Everybody wants to know that they're wanting choices and, and different things to try. And everybody's very open-minded. Mm. And this is the way to, to do it is to embrace that because they, you are open-minded. You want answers to all these things. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Well, any, everybody out there, if you're in Toowoomba, please, or even if you're closer to Toowoomba, look up Daphne and send her an email and get in contact if you, this sounds like something that you'd be more than interested in. We would just like to thank you very much for coming on Therapist Spotlight, Aunt Daphne, and we'll, um, yeah. See yeah, you right. Thank you very much for having me.
No worries, guys. We'll catch you later. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you for listening to Therapist Spotlight. If you would like to know more about ANTA, visit us at www.anta.com.au.